Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so let's keep painting along. So my De Scornvember Painting Challenge, or De Scornber Painting Challenge, it's coming along pretty well. You know, not too crazily. Uh, I'm just painting up some Scorn to them, painting up some Pain Givers, and Beast Masters, I believe they're called, so that'll be cool. After this week, I should be up at my goal of 35 point list, so it'll be really fun. And it's going to be time to film some battle reports, so it'll be a lot of fun. So let's get to painting. So grab some miniatures, grab some brushes, grab some paint, and paint along. Hey everyone, so welcome to the, uh, the slight chaos, which is my desk at the moment. But it's okay. So today I'll be painting some pain givers and beast masters. I don't know which ones are which. I think these guys are the pain givers probably, because they have uh, blades. They're probably getting pain. I don't know. It's all good. And just so you guys see, here is the tutorial model. I just finished it up. The reason why the banner isn't, uh, this is for a specific person. So uh, the person didn't want me to paint the banner. So it's okay, but this is the tutorial model for this week for the war. So a uh, Hawk Lord's captain. He turned out pretty cool. He's very, you know, definitely a Hawk Lord's color scheme. So go check that out if you want. Go check out the war. I tend to film this just after I, I finish the tutorial. So it's all good there. Yeah. Cool. So let's get this guy on. We'll start talking. So I just was reading about a few minutes ago. It was interesting. I don't know why, but I'll start talking about this at the beginning. Um, I was reading about the interview, the movie. I think it's called the interview. The one with uh, Seth Rogen. Sorry. Just got to my head Seth Rogen interviewing, or uh, James Franco interviewing Kim Jong-un video. And it got, uh, it's canceled indefinitely. The odds are they're never going to show it. So that's kind of crazy. But it's one of those cases where you do a you do a subject like that. You know, it's a very sensitive subject to a part of the world, where you're hypothetically making fun of their leader of a, you know, dictatorship. Um, it's pretty risky. So, you know, that's kind of what happens. You know, I I'm kind of curious. It's obviously it's one of those weird gray areas because you don't want to censor art, right? And movies are an art form, but at the same time you don't want to hurt anyone, right? And in the end, uh, people might have gotten injured, hurt because of this movie. So it's an interesting uh, gray area, you know. So here I am going to be painting up some uh, some beastmasters, pain givers, I believe they're called, and pain giver beast handlers. That's it. So that'll be fun, and then. Uh, after this, I, I'm pretty much at my 35 points. This is good. It'll be, uh, it's been a good challenge bit month because, um, Rubik's trying to escape right now. He's in my workshop with me, but, uh, it's been a good month and it's not over yet, obviously, but next week is a write off. There's no way. So as you guys know, uh, so it's not a shock. Those you people who watch this video will know. I'm gonna also say this in my Q and J video. And yes, there's gonna be a Q and J video. I promise this week. Um, come hell or high water, it will be on. I promise. I really want to get that. People have been asking me about it. Um, it's it's gonna be here. I promise. It is going to. Uh, be tomorrow. My goal is to film it shortly after this video. I'm gonna go and uh, film the uh, Q and J. But uh, yeah, so that's one of the big ones people have been asking me to do. And so as I said, this week basically here's my what I'm gonna do this week. This is what's happening. Um, this has been a really busy week, but um, I'm gonna film all of my normal content. Right, including Q and J. So right now it's painting with Jay, and so far you guys have already seen. There's been a battle report put up. Um, but I was actually, you know, I'm not gonna ruin it for you. Actually, go watch, go see the battle report. I'm not gonna ruin the battle report. But uh, so the battle report is up now, and what else? Uh, there's been a, this week's, you know, miniature painting 101, which was. Um, Dips, I believe. I believe it was dips. So that's cool. 
Um, so dips is now up. And then there's a battle report. And then there's going to be a Penguin J. And then probably it'll be up probably Sunday. I just need to refilm my... Um, there's a couple... I noticed a couple small discrepancies when I, in my next um, How to Play 40K, 7th edition, while I was editing it. So I need to just quickly go refilm a couple parts of the tabletop portion of my filling. As you see, I, I do a green... As I did the last one, there's a green screen part and a uh, part on the table. So the part on the table just needs to be quickly, a couple parts need to be refixed. Because I noticed a couple parts that it, they're right. Like I don't make any giant errors or anything. But it looks like it, it doesn't show perfectly what I was trying to convey. So I, uh, I'm going to refilm it. Just so that it shows a little clearer. Cool stuff. Once again, there's gonna be a lot of gold in these guys. As with my other normal scheme. So that's good. One B Sandler. The uh, gray liner, done. So, next one. Um, what was I saying? So, yeah, I'm gonna film all my normal series for the week and then I'm calling it. Either for the week, maybe for the year. I'm not taking a year off, obviously. I'm saying um, I'm taking a week off. I've decided that I work hard, as do most of you people who watch these videos. Um, I don't. I'm not saying I work any harder than y'all, but um, I've been working hard. You know, two jobs, many hours a week, and when I'm not working at one job, I'm working on the other. Really, I'm always filming, or working, or you know, work filming. That's Rubik itching himself in the background. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 just tired. Not uh, like you know emotionally tired. I'm just physically tired. I've just been working a lot lately, and uh, it's a busy time of year, right? So I'm gonna take a week off, and I'm gonna go see my family and and some in laws, and you know have a good time and relax. And then I'm, I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm either gonna come back full throttle again. Uh, the week of the 20, I guess it would be the 28th, 29th. Today is the 18th. So it would be the 29th. So the 29th, um, I'm going to either come back or the week after. You know, I'm just going to see. The another option which I'm really thinking about is not taking the week off but filming but not releasing any videos so that way I start the year a week ahead of schedule right a week I can like film all that week for the next week and that way I'm, I'm already not you know running out of time for scheduling and stuff I can already start the week up the year on a good note we'll see but uh, it's been an awesome year it really has and this every like these painting challenges they just time flies by really do a couple things these pain challenges have shown me. Number one, it blow it really it really surprised me how when I started doing these these painting videos, painting with Jay, how much work I can get done in an hour. You know, if you sit down and just um and you just remove the outside um what's it called? Distractions. You know you can get so much done really do and it surprised me and I just it blows my brain now how much I can get done in an hour it's it's, it's awesome what else I want to go see The Hobbit I know it came out today officially well, like last night at midnight people have been saying it's amazing Battle of the Five Armies it'll be good I actually wanted to go see the the, uh, the interview movie it looked pretty funny but uh, not anymore But yeah, it's been good. You know what? I'm, I'm excited. Um, next month, I'm definitely hitting Tyranids Hardcore. I did. See, what people don't know is, I, you know this painting challenge is right now Scorn. It's Discornberg, right? But um, for my other channel, like I do 
I do paint models outside of my painting challenges for tutorials or for the purposes of videos. And so I recently just, it was a quick paint up. It wasn't like my best work, but it wasn't terrible by any means. It just painted up a swarm lord for my, um, in the warp, there's a show called Face Off where um, you put two, you know, HQs or just close combat monsters in combat. You see who wins, right? And uh, people wanted, I got a few requests for the Swarm Lord. I didn't actually have the Swarm Lord model until recently. I was like, oh, I should definitely get a Swarm Lord model together. So what I did was I took the arms from the kit, the plastic kit. I used for, I also painted, built a, um, here it is over here, but it's not fully painted or anything, but you can see. Ooh, there's a wing. And I have the uh, Forge World Arms. There's a Flyrance with Twin Link to Bowers. So he'll be painted next month during my painting challenge. And uh, so I already had him, so I paint, I built and painted up quickly a Swarm Lord. So that just added even a few more points to my, uh, my army right there. Because that's what, 225 points, I think, for a Swarm Lord, so... Not bad. It was him. This week's uh, face-off was him. I'm not going to say the winner, of course. It was him versus Lysander of the Imperial Fists. And it was an interesting battle. That's all I'm going to say. It was interesting. I did not know who was going to win because Swarm Lord gets more attacks and hits on threes. But Lysander has a better invulnerable save. Hits on fours but has a Mastercrafted weapon, right? And three attacks versus four attacks... Doesn't make that huge of a difference. They're both wounding each other on twos. Right? So it was almost perfect because one gets four attacks, one gets three attacks, one has a three up involve, one has a four up involve. So I was kind of curious to see who's going to win. Obviously, the Swarm Lord gets to go first because Lysander goes at initiative one, but Lysander's weapon is concussive. And he. The, what happens a lot in face off. I'm going to mention this. Um, I'm not ruining anything because it's you know, no specific videos or anything. But it's happened a couple times during face-off challenges where Lysander will knock somebody down to initiative one because it's concussive. And then sometimes they'll even kill each other. If that was a mistake. Um, I'll fix that after. Um, and then sometimes they'll kill each other at the same initiative. It was kind of fun. So... That happens with Lysander and a couple other guys. Anybody who's concussive, essentially. What else? I'm going to be do filming battle reports tomorrow. Uh, my friend, Andy, who's actually the guy who got me into back into 40k. And it's a really are funny, because he got me back into 40k, and now he doesn't play 40k. He only plays Warm Hearts. But um, he got me back into 40k years ago, and he's, so he's responsible, so thank him, you know, for Jay, in general. But um, I'm going to go film some, uh, he's coming over to film some Warm Hordes Battle Reports. Most of which are going to be probably in the Warp. Uh, because the Warp really wants the Warm Hordes Battle Reports. Versus uh, the free content which really likes the, um, the 40k Battle Reports. But maybe one or two Warm Hordes. We're going to try to film like four or five. We can do that. War, War Machine and Hordes. Um, I'll just call them Warm Hordes from now on. The thing is about Warm Hordes is it doesn't take as much time to film a battle report if you're playing 35 point games. It's such a fast paced game and literally if you've seen some battle reports where someone just makes not really a mistake, they just kind of, you know, they make a move, turn one or two and it backfires or works. So there's, you know, 40k is one of those games where you, you know what, games could end on turn one. I've lost on turn one and I've won on t turn one. Both uh, against this with and against the same army. Um, but I've won turn one against Dark Angels, and I've lost turn one with Dark Angels, because uh, the player this was all sixth edition, but the player chose to dr drop in team, uh, turn two, and I decided that one battle report, and I got I rolled insanely bad. Uh, I had a squad of of Marines. On the board, uh, tactical marines and squad of ten, and I failed. It's a battle report in, in um, for mini wargaming. And if you look at the battle report, you see how bad my luck is. I failed like every three up armor save you can imagine, and my squad just got wiped out, and I got tabled. Turn one, so that happened, and then I've lost turn two as well. Um, the infamous, I call it infamous for the re because it was 
one of the most hated videos of uh, 40k that many warrior member put out. Uh, it was a White Scars versus Tyranids battle report where Owen put together a White Scars list. And um, I was told to play Tyranids by Matt because they wanted to try them out against them and see how they'd fare. And so I played Tyranids against White Scars and I got table turn two. It was not even close. Uh, White Scars went first. They won the roll and went first. Scouted, moved up, grab weaponed all the Tyranids to death. I moved up, tried to assault them, got grab weaponed to death. And nothing worked. And then I got tabled. Turn two. So, it was kind of a fun game. It was, it, you know, it happens. And the thing is, I've played so many games of 40k. And even War Machine Awards. i played so many games in general. I'm not afraid to lose. I'm not, I don't care necessarily about winning. I care about the game itself. Is it entertaining? Uh, I prefer if it's close. Because close games are more entertaining to me. You know? Me getting wiped off the board, or me wiping my opponent off the board, isn't very interesting unless it's done in an epic fashion. You know, like, it, just random luck, as I said, like, and it's just hilarious, and that kind of stuff. That's okay. But I like games that are fun and close and stuff, and, um, you know, um, it, it, you okay? Okay, go lay down. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't like those kind of games, personally. I don't like filming them. And that's the problem with War Machine and Hordes, is that uh, I find that a lot of games... One of the reasons why it's not as good of a battle report, I find, is that um, a lot of the crazy high-level games... Like, if you watch the... Um, if you watch any of the Iron Arena... Uh, Iron Arena. I, you know, the Iron Gauntlet finals that they put on YouTube from the, uh, the people... Uh, from Priority Press, put them on. Um, they, a lot of the time, you'll basically find two, two different things happen. One of two different things. First thing that happens is the game goes on forever, which is cool. But it goes on forever because both guys just wipe out each other to the point where neither one, they all lose all their heavy hitters. And and as well, all the people that can fulfill the goal of the, the objective of the of the mission. So then it's like all the weaklings, because you go, you intentionally go for your opponent's bigger hitter guys, right? Because you want to knock them out and get them, get, you know, get them out of the game. So what happens is a bunch of the little dudes, the ones who are weaker, uh, are running around the battlefield trying to score the game. And it just takes forever because, you know, both teams were able to dish out the pain but neither one was able to survive, you know, and like do an actual go, you know, thrive in the pain. Um, and then the other op thing that happens in a lot of these battle reports is literally this happens in a lot of them. And one player moves up, and either player two kills player one. So player one moved too much up in their in their turn. Now this happens a lot. Like Owen. Owen from um, previously from Mini Wargaming. Um, he actually has a list right now that he's been kind of toting. Does this? That if you don't know exactly what his list does and how he's going to accomplish it, you can't prevent it. So what happens is um, turn one. He sorry during the roll off. Most of the time in War Machine, you kind of want to go second. So, turn one, he likes to go second. Like, it, it's a very frequent strategy in, in War Machine to make go second. Get a better um, deployment zone, and you can be very reactive. And usually turn one anyway, the first player just moves up and runs because there's nothing to do. The ranges are very small in, for, in War Machine. Um, so, Owen's new strategy is turn one, he makes his opponent move up. And if his opponent... All of their if the opponent does is move his caster, who is the is kind of like the war. For those who don't know War Machine and Hordes, it's the warlord essentially. The caster or the warlock is the is the warlord. But the big difference between 40k and War Machine in this one perspective, there's a lot of differences. Obviously, in 40k, slay the warlord earns you a secondary objective point. In War Machine. Slay the Warlord. And the Warlord is either the Warlock or the Warcaster, depending if you're playing War Machine or Hordes. You win. It's a flat-out win. So there's two ways to win in, for, in War Machine. A, 
Um, you obtain the objective. So if it's like a points game, you got to get points a certain way, like controlling zones, you get points. First one of five wins. So first one of five in that case will win the game. And the game will go on until someone has five points or until someone forfeits. Not uh, any, t any moment before that. So there's no indefinite, it's an indefinite number of turns. It's not a set number of turns like 40 game. The other way of winning is simply kill your opponent's caster or warlock. You're the war boss of your opponent, right? You want the leader. And Owen has this list right now that he's been, um, he's been bragging about. That literally his strategy is turn one. Um, it's such a nasty list that turn one he makes his opponent go first, and then he kills your opponent's caster because his list is very is very hard to stop unless you know exactly what it does. Which I know his list in pretty good detail because he's talked about it a few times. And it really is. It's a very strong list. Now, it does have some counters, obviously. But um, most armies are not going to be countering it too easily. So, turn one, he wins. Um, against weaker players, he frequently wins turn one. And against stronger players, he even wins turn one or two. So, you spend more time in these games setting up the game than playing the game. So that doesn't make for a really good battle report, in my opinion, because it doesn't, you know, it has, if you're a skills player learning how to, you know, um, it, it doesn't have much information, unfortunately. Unless, unless the only thing it, it really informs you about is how nasty is this combination, right? If you see a combination that works really well and kills somebody turn one, you can say to yourself, oh, that's a really nasty combination. And uh, I know what it does in case I face it in a uh, setting. Like if I and if I end up playing against that same list or a similar list, um, I now know what it does and how it does it, so I can try to to stop it. So there's that information. But uh, as far as entertainment value goes, it really doesn't have a lot, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna put in my opinion because there are some battle report of people that make good entertaining battle reports for, for War Machine and Hortz. Now, but if you take, for example, let's choose one. My favorite one, uh, Wargamer Girl. If you take Wargamer Girl's battle reports, um, her games don't tend to be one turn kills. They tend to be very close or long games. You know, they don't, they don't, it's not like you see them and you go, oh, okay, this guy's going to win turn one, or this guy's going to win turn two. Um, it's, it's, they tend to be closer, and I like those ones. I don't, that's my personal opinion of it. Now, some people really like the, the like, hey, you made a mistake, I kill you battle reports. That's cool. Like, that's your opinion, exactly. You know, that's what I'm saying, in my opinion, because there's no, obviously, better or worse battle reports. There's quality, and that's a different story. But uh, there's no, you know better or worse uh, you know. I do find that 40k um, one of the things that 40k is is 40k is really epic and it's very um, especially in the latest editions it tends to be very thematic and you know it, it, it looks good it feels good filming and people like to watch it you know it's still the most popular game but um, to me like it, the th just the feel of the game. It feels different. It feels cinematic. It feels thematic. And it just... It tends to translate well onto... Um, let me make sure this is... It tends to translate well into battle reports, you know. And I love adding my own little... Let me just make sure this is focused. Let me go... Let's move this here. Focus on my finger. Yeah, I guess it's in focus. So, um, and I love adding my little bit of flavor to them, like the deep strike sounds or, you know, the occasional taunting. Because it just helps to add to that cinema, the cinematic feel. But uh, War Machine doesn't really have that, I find. War Machine is really... I don't know. It's hard to describe what I'm, I'm saying in this, but it doesn't have that same feel. It doesn't mean it's a worse game, you know? 
obviously there is no such I really agree with Ash from Mini Wargaming. There's no such thing as a better game or a worse game. If you're saying this game's better, it it no. You know. Hey everyone, sorry about that. Really so uh, my camera just uh, Rubik barked and tripped the cord and apparently my camera's dead. The downside of these Canon uh, video cameras is that they don't charge unless they are off and plugged in. So if they're on and like filming and being plugged in, they don't actually charge at all while being fi while filming, or they charge very very little bit. So they're you know all of a sudden somebody trips the cord and your camera dies. Um, yeah, I was saying I agree with Ash that you know what so, I guess you could argue some games are better than others, but I there's no best game really. It's all what you like. It really is. You know I like 40k. Uh, I, I like War Machine and Hordes, but I like 40k the most. It's my game. I love it. You know, it's a fun game. I really enjoy playing it. I'm gonna lo I love making videos about it. And then there's War Machine and Hordes. That, um, I already painted this guy. It's a good game too. And I don't mind making videos about it either. I just prefer 40k. But am I gonna make 40 War Machine and Hordes videos? Of course. But I'm, I'm not against playing War Machine or Hordes or at all. I'm just, I like... 40k more and I will eventually get into infinity and war and Malfo. Um, yeah so what else yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next week. It's gonna be fun. I'm almost done with Christmas shopping. Um, yep, almost done with Christmas shopping. I just got a couple more small things to pick up. I did end up buying some family members gift cards because they're impossible to shop for. So, you know, I don't feel guilty. Here's the thing. I don't actually ever feel guilty about gift cards. Money. Money's good too, but I don't give money usually. I give gift cards. Because if um, if you don't know what they if they don't know what they want, right? And they don't like getting things that they don't like, um, or don't want, you know what I'm saying? Getting I like gift cards because gift cards, the moment you want something, and you may not know what you want right now, but when you want something and you have a gift card, you can go get it. And I know you're essentially controlling where the location of that the pers person purchases it. But if you buy a mall gift card or like Walmart, ev you know, everything is at Walmart or a mall. So I'm okay with that. I really am. <laughs> These guys are going to be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying Scorn tomorrow. Um, as I said, really, I've never tried Scorn. They're going to be a fun army to try. They're a challenging army, essentially. They can be competitive. They have some really nasty guys. But they don't tend to be used much in the competitive scene. If you look at the... Yeah, so if you look at most big tournaments... Or like the World Championships, you'll know Scorn was not one of the most frequently played faction. No. Excuse me. They weren't. Um, most armies are, most other armies for hordes and even War Machine just uh, work better together. You know, they're not as difficult to use and don't have a, a challenge within themselves just to play them. So, they tend to uh, use more often. You know? But yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. I'm, I'm just... It, I'm, I'm a little burnt out. Not from making videos at all. It's not the burnt out part from um, that at all. It's actually my other job combined. Um, this, as I've said before many times, this is the best part of my day. When I get to just sit down and paint, and work on videos, and talk to y'all, and it's, it's honestly the best part of my day, I love it, but, um, 
I can't just do that. You know. I gotta sing for my supper, as the saying goes. So I uh, I do that, and it's okay. But uh, I've been just tired. It's been a lot of work lately on both things, and then um, that review last weekend. Oh, let's talk about that for a second. So uh, as you probably are well aware, I did try the um, the Skype. And um, when we did the test, or we did a test run, but I only did a short-term test run, um, the video looked a lot better in the short-term test run than in the long, when, when I eventually did it. And the longer that we kept recording, the worse the audio got. And so I put up the first one, and I kind of did warn you guys ahead of time, but I didn't think it would be that bad, and probably neither did you guys. So then... Uh, I put it up, and 10 minutes later, I was very much informed that people are not happy with that video. It took, like, 10 minutes for five really angry comments, which I understand, right? People are, you know what? I'm, I understand that. I, I've i become uh, one of the people that people depend on, depend on for uh, codex reviews. I, I feel that. And I shoot in HD normally, and this one was not in HD. It was not. Apparently, uh, the Blitz microphone or uh, the Blitz camera was in HD, but um, it wasn't good quality. I will agree. The audio and the video, but the information was good. I will defend that to the death that the the quality of the information was good. And De, De Blet, as I as I thought he would. Um, being a Blood, Heart, Blood Angels player at heart, he really brought a lot to the discussion. I really thought it was cool how he inclu included the fluff, and he started talking about the fluff and how they justified why you know certain things happened in the Codex, and he was just you know he brought a lot. It was an awesome. I, I had a great time. If if it was only able to film in better quality, it would have been perfect time. He was awesome, and I felt really bad. Because uh, then I was put in a situation where essentially I had two options. A, put out the remaining... We filmed seven parts. So seven parts were filmed. Um, so I could put out the remaining six parts and just anger people, right? And uh, that would have been really brutal. Um, and deal with the, the bad, com angry comments, right? Which I understand. People, you know what? I understand the quality. It wasn't there. You know, um, or refilm it, and I refilmed it. I decided to refilm it, but then I linked the other videos. I did upload them, so if people wanted to hear uh, the awesome, you know, the awesome information of Deblet, they can click on it and watch it at their own discretion. And that's it. That way, it's a compromise. I didn't refilm the first part because the first part was so was watched. It was very much watched and, oh, and obviously very hated. But I decided not to refilm that one. So I have to refilm parts two onward. And uh, so that was crazy, because I filmed, we filmed for a good chunk of Sunday. And then I had to literally turn around and, instead of focusing on my other videos for the week, uh, turn around and refilm the entire set other than part one, which, to be fair, part one, though it's my most watched part of the of the series, usually, it's not the most informative. It tends to go with, you know, the special rules of the army, the force organization chart, but the actual components itself tends to, you know, within the parts. I find HQ tends to be one of the more information or interesting sections. Um, so, yeah, and I just turned around and refilmed for hours upon hours and hours, and it's okay now. You know, and... Uh, so, the review is done, and I will probably not be doing it in that style again, because it didn't work out. Maybe if I can upload, if maybe one day when I get a better computer, uh, he's already done, I broke his arm off. I'll re-glue that on before doing the next step. So, maybe if I can get a better computer quality or something, you know, maybe it'll fix that problem, maybe better solution or something, but I won't be doing, for those of you wondering, I'm not going to be doing another... Skype codex review and I understand why and I'm not you know what as I said I'm not bitter or anything about it I I understand the quality was not there and that's what it was so that's why I refilmed it so I hope no one ever questions my conviction because I filmed a codex review twice in two days on the same codex 
Um, because the first one was not a good, and I could some YouTubers I know of would just say tough luck. I put it out; it's free. Tough luck. But I did not say that. I refilmed it all. So sorry. I'm just putting this guy's arm back on. Or girl. It's a, I think it's a woman. Her arm back on. I'm learning that uh, apparently um, Morgul, P. Morgul, is like, who's my caster? P. Morgul. Ooh, from last week. P. Morgul is like an upgrade, is basically like a character version of that. Like, she's a caster, obviously, so she's the leader, but she was a pain giver. You know, she's a pain giver at heart. It's her job. So. Yeah, and I really hope you guys and girls, obviously, enjoyed the second version because the second version did come off much better and I had a lot of more information because I was able to film it after the first one where, whereas I learned a lot from DeBlatt. You know, his opinion did sway my opinion in certain things because we discussed things and we were like, oh yeah, and I totally forgot about certain things and I remembered some that he didn't and it was just a great a great time. So DeBlatt, if you're out there watching this, I had nothing but an awesome time filming with you. Sorry, the cord just got tripped again. And uh, so if it doesn't, if it gets gets cut off, Deblet, as I said, thank you very much. You know, people thank Deblet because he he took a lot of time out of his schedule as well to film with me, and to just you know to the codex. Overall, I think the codex is okay. It's not bad at all. It's not a top tier like it won't it still i don't think will face eldar or tau very well but uh, it's not bad it's not bad codex at all it's not yeah they just took a lot of out that made the codex the previous codex original you know um it's now very it's kind of a red space marine army because uh, they are a type of space marines right? it makes sense it really is um but uh it's not a bad codex i'm not blasting it in any way there's some really good combinations in it. I still love Mephiston. And, uh, yeah, it was good. Right now I'm just simply adding the Rickland Flesh Shade to all of the hands of these guys. You might see them tomorrow unpainted. Uh, not unpainted, this level. I might finish up wherever I'm at here for the day. Depending on how much time I have, because after this, I'm this is literally what's, what's going to happen today. I should vlog my days; it's kind of fun. But uh, I'm filming this now, and then I'm going to go upload. I do. I use two computers: one computer for my vloggy material, so it's just one straight take, one no real editing. I use one computer, Sony Vegas Pro, and then what I do is at the same time, because this takes me literally five minutes to edit. Right, I, not even five minutes, twenty seconds, really. But uh, I have to upload the footage first. So I upload footage, I put in my intro, and then I render it. It's not too hard at all, right? But um, my other computer, I'm gonna go and re uh, edit and render the painting tutorial for this week for the warp. And then, while the second I'm done rendering that. I'm going to um, then do Q and J. So So yeah, Q and J because I really want to get a Q and J done this week. And then as I said, after I've done that, I'm done the week um there's still one more video for the warp and then there's the q and j and then the uh, how to play 4k so and when i'm done i'm just gonna take a week off at least a week maybe longer maybe shorter no definitely not shorter at least a week right the earliest you're gonna see content again is monday um monday Feb um, not february monday december 28th or 9th 29th Because I need a week off. I just need to take some time off, refresh, come back, go crazy, making videos. Cool. They're all done. Flesh shaded. Hmm. 
What should I do right now? I could go paint the whips. For the whips, I'm going to use Mornfang Brown. Yeah. I think I deserve it. But I'm very much thankful. You know, it's been an amazing year. I say this a lot in my videos because I always think about whenever I'm painting like this, I think about all that I've accomplished and it blows my brain. This year I've essentially doubled my number of subscribers. I've quadrupled in the last six months, my viewer counts a month and uh, I'm having a great time doing it. Really it's fun. You know, I, I can't complain. I really can't. I am so grateful for what I get to do. And for all you viewers out there, you know, you people are listening to me painting my models. Very few people get to do that. So, you know, that's really cool. It is very cool. So, I thank you, people, out there in internet land, you know, all around the world. I, I can't thank you enough. And that's, I'm never, I don't think I'm ever going to forget the thanking. You know, some YouTubers have, and I'm not dropping any names whatsoever, but I know some YouTubers have forgotten to say thank you. You know, that we, YouTubing is not a career for most people. And it can't be a career for most people. And for those who can, I don't even make it a career, but I am now, I think my, just between us, you and me, I think that at the rate I'm growing, maybe, just maybe, by the end of 2015, there's gonna be a video called I Quit. Now, this is an insider information, so you guys, don't, don't tell it. Be a part of the joke. But if there's a video that ever says, I quit, it means that I, I'm going to say this in my announcement. I'm quitting my other job because I can do this for a living. And I think it might happen. I'm confident by the end of 2015, I will be in a position where I can leave my other job and do this for a living. And if that's the case... A, oh my goodness, there's going to be a lot of videos. Yeah. Or, I'll just be well rested in videos, because I'm not doing videos all the time. So, that'll be great. I think, that's my goal. End of 2015. We'll see. If I fail, I fail, but I'm going to try my best. I try. No matter what I do, I try. Yep. So, I think about a year ago, you know, I was working at Mini Wargaming. I was happy. I wasn't un ups unhappy right, by any means, but I was working at Mini Wargaming, getting about, at that point, maybe 15, 20,000 views on a good month. On a really good month, 20,000 views. So... I've met so many amazing people over the last year. I've had a great time. I filmed so many videos. I think the final count is going to be roughly somewhere in the 207. No, this year alone, I filmed 300 plus videos for sure. 300, at least 300. Um, at least 300, because I've already I put 170 videos in the warp. So. Cool. Whips are painted. Um, so I've painted, you know, made so many videos. I've had a great year. It's been a good year. It really has. And I'm excited to hear what 2015 has in store. This is not. Now, there's the thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to come back into a painting with Jay, because two weeks from today is New Year's Eve. No, today's the 18th. It's New Year's Day. Alright, maybe I'll do a New Year's Day edition. 
where we'll discuss uh, New Year's resolutions or something. But 2015, I'm excited. You know, I'm, I really am going to try hard and see what happens. One of the things I've just been most excited about is, you know, today I, I've been cleaning out my office. It's really chaotic right now because I'm reorganizing my office. But uh, today I looked and on my shelf space in my, in my office and in my workshop, there's so much shelf space now where there used to be boxes of models. And I've knocked out so many in the last, you know, six months that there's now gaps. And it's awesome to see that. And, yeah, just, oh, so great. I feel like that state of accomplishment. <laughs> Oops. I just painted something and then touched it with my finger. Accomplishment. I should probably end it soon. It's okay. I'll finish with these. Whips. Um, yeah. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to end the series now. I'm gonna try to do come back for one more episode. I'm well, not ending the series. I mean for the year, but. Yeah. I got one more week. I'm definitely gonna do a, a, a video at the end of the month, doing a. Uh, Miniature showcase, obviously, for my Scorn army. And you gotta see all of it put together. Well, I'm just gonna finish that, because those guys are all really wet. And I'm gonna do a wash, and I don't wanna start the medals yet. I'm just gonna finish basing this guy. This is a, uh, a Phoenix that I painted up a while ago. And I'm just gonna quickly base him, because um, I'm painting him for my friend Andy. So... He'll be in some of the battle reports probably tomorrow. I'm excited to see how he does against Malik Karn. Um, he's probably going to win. The Phoenix... See, the, this guy is called the... Um, not the Phoenix. He's a type of Phoenix. He's a character Phoenix called... Oh, I forget his name. Um, I just introduced him a second ago as well. I think I said Phoenix. Um, he is the... Imperatus. That's his name. He's the Imperatus. The Imperatus... He's kind of the Warjack equivalent of a guy from Scorn, actually, called Molly Karn. They're both incredibly good, close combat oriented. Um, one's a war beast, one's a Warjack. And Molly Karn is known for his shenanigans. Like, he can kill something and then move a little bit, and then kill something, and then move a little bit, and then kill something, and then move a little bit again, and then move back. Like, he, he can bounce around the battlefield like a little, you know, like a game of Pong. Good reference. And, um,. And then, you know, bounce back. And the Imperatus here can actually do very, a lot of the same things that Moloch Karn can do. But one of the advantages that Moloch Karn has is that Moloch Karn has an ability where he can boost in, in... There's a thing called boosting where you can add an extra dice to help you accomplish what you want to accomplish. It's called boosting. But you, uh, Moloch Karn can boost after you've rolled. So you can roll, and if you fail and you're close, Moloch Karn can be like, oh, I can roll another dice then. Most of, every other person basically, except for a couple others, has to boost ahead of time. So you don't know if you necessarily need that dice, and sometimes you don't need the dice, and it was just a complete waste of a dice. So he has that ability. But Phoenix um, Warjax, they're called. Um, they're not called Jax from this army, they're called. Whatever, I'll remember it later. But um, Phoenixes, and he's a type of Phoenix, they have this thing called Phoenix Protocol, where once a game. After they die, they can come back to life. But they can come back to life on your opponent's turn. So you kill them on your turn. And uh, it's kind of like Necrons. But imagine Necrons that come up, but you don't have the chance to kill them again. Right? Because he dies. You kill him on your turn. And then, um, on his turn, he comes back to life. But usually, you have something close to him. Usually, whatever killed him is right beside him. Because you, in War Machine, you don't move that much after... Most guys don't move a whole lot after killing something. You know? Um, 
like in 40k for it's similar in 40k like you, the movement phase is the first thing that you know that's t what typically happens in war machine a model moves and then it attacks so it doesn't move much after it attacks and so whatever hit it usually is right beside it or close and then this guy likes to just reactivate he's weak he's uh, he's not weaker but uh he has the same abilities but he's easier to kill the second time he comes back with only a few hit po points left but uh, that being said, he comes back to life and then just whams whatever destroyed him. He just turns around and kills it. And then, so now you have the Imperatus, this guy. Um, he's back on the table. He's weaker. But usually whatever you sent at him was strong too. Unless you just shoot him via... So the basically the way to do it is you kill him via shooting. And that way he comes back to life, but he's weaker. And you keep all your stronger things away from him. But it's hard to stop him sometimes because he moves up and then you shoot him and then he dies. But then he reactivates and just moves up again and then you're like, uh-oh, he's getting really close. So he's a fun one to deal with. And basically, in one game I played, it was in a battle report that I think was ended up for free. Um, he, What I did was I had a caster who has this gun. And he's my favorite gun to pull. Whenever my friend Andy plays this guy, I like to pull out this gun because this gun is just hilarious. And what the gun does is it shoots and hits the guy. He can't move. It stops him in his tracks. So the entire game, Andy really wanted to use him. And I was... Sorry, I'm just going to get the grass here. But uh, I blocked him the entire game because I just kept hitting him with his gun that made him not allowed to move. So that was a lot of fun. So, as I said, they're all drying. They're still wet right now. So I'm just going to add some flock to him quickly. This is painting with Jay still. So, a couple of areas of grass. Um, luckily, this won't be out. Andy won't be able to see this video. Andy probably doesn't watch my videos right now, so it's all good. Don't tell Andy. Just don't tell him. There we go. A couple areas of... of That's a flock. If anybody wonders why that stick is here, there's a stick, if you see carefully, it's because this model was really not well designed. I don't think they were well. I like Priority Press's designs usually. I'm just blowing off the excess grass. There he goes. Look at him. So he's all done. He'll be awesome tomorrow on the battlefield. So um, he just wasn't well designed. His hips didn't go in together well. And the pressure was on different points of his legs, so it just ended up collapsing. So I'm going to end there. So these guys ended up looking pretty good in the end. They're, uh, you know, they have skin. Their skin is not done yet because they're being washed. And uh, I'm going to wash the whips with some Agarx Earthshade. So thank you very much. And uh, let's call it there. So that concludes another episode of Painting with Jay. I really hope you got some stuff accomplished and that you painted along and got as much done as I did. That's what it's about. And I hope you guys are, and girls are accomplishing your goals as well. So thank you very much for watching. And most importantly, thank you for subscribing and watching my videos. It just, I can't thank you enough. You people are amazing. And because of you, I get the chance to do this. So thank you very much. And I hope you all have a really safe holiday season. Uh, there will be a Q&J out tomorrow and probably another paint, uh, How to Play 40K. But uh, I'll see you all either late in December or in the new year. So take care. Have a great holiday season. And uh, talk to you soon. So until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.